Hey everybody, I'm Ethan from Yukon HKN, and today we'll be doing a problem using passive side convention. So, when we want to calculate the power um, going through a voltage source, right, and we know the current flowing through it, we define dissipating power as the current flowing into the positive, out the negative, and we calculate that through P equals VI. Now, when the current is flowing into the negative and out the positive of a voltage source, we call this developing power, and we calculate that as P equals negative VI. All right, so now we're going to apply this to our circuit problem, our circuit here. So the problem is we want to find currents I1 through I4. So they're represented as these currents, so I1, I2, I3, and I4. Um, this next part we want to know is which elements are de developing power, right? We're talking about developing power. And we're also going to calculate what that power is. Also, we're going to, for the third problem, the third part, we're going to calculate which elements are dissipating power, right? So we talked about dissipating power here. And we're going to calculate how much each element uh, that's dissipating power is dissipating. All right, so let's get started. So, so when we look at this circuit, right, we want to find, let's start with current I2 here, right? So using node voltage, we can kind of see that there's a node here and there's a node there, right? And lucky for us, we know that this voltage here is 10 volts. So we can easily calculate the current running through this branch, right, to calculate I2. Right, by dividing 10 volts divided by 20 ohms, by Ohm's law, and we can get the current running through it. So 10 volts divided by 20 ohms. Amazing, and that gives us 0.5 amps. All right, and similarly on this side, we know that there's five volts, uh, five volts across these two terminals, right here, these two points, and we know there's 50 ohms across it as well. So 5 volts <coughs> divided by 50 ohms, all right, will give us I3, and we can say that I3 is equal to 5 volts, 5 volts over 50 ohms. Excellent. And that's equal to 0.1 amps. All right. So we know the two voltages at these two points, right? And that means we, we can figure out the current flowing through the, these 10 ohms, right? It's not asked for specifically, but it can be very helpful um, later to find I1 and I4. So let's find. Let's call this I10, right? And it's, let's say it's flowing that way. And we can do, uh, we can find the voltage across these two points, right? Which is 10 minus 5. So let's call this right over here, I10. And let's say it's 10 volts minus 5 volts over 10 ohms, right? And that'll give us the current flowing through there, which is 0.5 amps. All right, so now if we want to find I1, right, we can easily apply KCL. And KCL tells us that any current flowing into a node must come out at the other end, right? So, so we know that there's 0.5 amps flowing down this branch and 0.5 amps flowing across this branch, right? So coming out of this node right here is a total of 0.5 plus 0.5, one amp, right? Which means that one amp has to be coming in. So by KCL, we could say that I1 is equal to negative I10. 
Uh, we'll just say, we'll make it easier and just say I1 is the sum of I10 plus I2. And that will give us 1 amp. Um, so I1 is equal to 1 amp. So the last part, we can do a similar process. Um, we want to figure out I4. And so we have I4 flowing into here. We, we assume I10 is flowing into there, and we have I3 coming out the other end. So the sum of I10 and I4 must equal I3, right? And by, we could write, uh, in terms of KCL, that I10 plus I4 minus I3 is equal to 0, right? And we can solve for I4. That's equal to I3 minus I10, right? And so we know I3 is equal to 0.1 amps. I10 is equal to 0.5 amps. So I4 is equal then to negative 0.4 amps. So when we say negative 0.4 amps, uh, that means that in reality it's flowing that way. Because we define this to be the positive uh, direction, and so it's flowing in the negative direction at negative 0.4 amps. So we'll just write, just just so we can uh, remember that. So there you have it. We've figured out I1 through I4. So now we can do part B, where we can figure out which elements are developing power and how much power is being developed. So if you look at our circuit, we can just look visually. We have to find a situation where the current is running into the negative part of uh, a voltage source or, or something with a voltage. And when we look, it, it can't be this because we have 0.4 amps running into the positive. It can't be the resistors because the current always flows into the positive. Right? So that means that the only place that's the only element that's developing power is this voltage source here. Since we found I1 to be positive 1 amp, so it's 1 amp flowing into the 10 volt source into the negative node, out the positive node. So we can calculate uh, the power being developed. So let's call it P 10 volt is equal to negative, because it's developing, negative 1 amp. times 10 volts, so is equal to negative 10 watts. Now, similarly, for C, everything else in the circuit is dissipating power, right? So it's going to have a positive P, uh, P value. So we can just go through it. We can calculate uh, first P of 20 ohms, and that's equal to I2, 0.5 amps times 20 ohms, and we square the I value because remember, um, we can also calculate power as I squared R, right? So knowing the current through a resistor, we can, we can actually uh, calculate the power running through it. Um, we can say P of uh, 10 ohms is equal to, um, 0.5 amps squared times 10 ohms. Um, P of 50 ohms, that's equal to uh, the current running through it, so 0.1 amps squared times 50 ohms. And then finally, the uh, the power across uh, being dissipated by this voltage source is going to be P5 volts. And that's just going to be VI. Uh, P equals VI, as we did there. So that'll be 5 volts times I4, which is 0.4 amps flowing into, uh, flowing into that 
uh, voltage source, so 0.4. And there you have it. So recap, we determined all of the currents running through the circuit. And by determining their directions, uh, whether or not they flowed into the positive or negative part of the voltage sources and the resistors, we were able to determine the power uh, dissipated or developed within the circuit. So thanks for watching, and good luck on any exams you're taking, and have a great day.